I'm uh, the vice chairman of the Liberal Space Foundation. And uh, let me uh, change the presentation so we can all start. Well, can I say, change the presentation? I'm not very really comfortable with uh, PBB. Let me see. Ah, uh, there we are. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, um, my main point of the talk, the main point of my talk is uh, how open source uh, has been uh, a catalyst for our organization to get to space. And actually, uh, it really go from uh, a basement in downtown Athens, and literal basement, to this. Um, and uh, of course, we couldn't be able to do this without partners, without people we are working together. Uh, like, there are some people from uh, LibreCube uh, and uh, people from other organizations that have Help us all along. Uh, the idea, if you like, is that uh, we started on a small basement that became a uh, um, um, physical space dedicated to open source, uh, open source hardware, uh, free software, open data generally open source technologies and uh, think about it as a microspace. Uh, the thing is that that old uh, basement by applying uh, open source ideals and uh, with the help of a very strong and uh, very diverse community, we gain something like that. And it's always open uh, for people working on uh, open source projects, not only uh, the Space Foundation. But we started there, and we started there uh, from a small uh, NASA Space Up Silence event. Uh, and uh, we worked uh, um, there in the past uh, with several workshops. Uh, about open source technologies and we say, yeah, why not uh, applying what we do on um, that hackathon? So we did. And nothing came out of it actually, especially for uh, Satmux, which was our first project. But uh, the thing is that we also. Um, joined the uh, Hacker Day Prize, the first one, and uh, had the chance to uh, get around uh, $200,000, which is a lot of money, especially for people in Greece. And we set up a non-profit, a Liberal Space Foundation. And that non-profit uh, actually works on developing open source technologies, um, in outer space, and, um, that has its challenges, of course. Uh, but well, the first thing that we started on working was uh, Satmix. Satmix is a satellite ground station network. Um, and nowadays, it has uh, the ability to. Uh, receive data and uh, transmit data. It's a really modular setup, so people can set up their own ground stations and they can put the network whatever they feel they have uh, available or they would like to uh, work with. And of course, the stack is uh, totally open source. Um, that actually allows us uh, to be able to um, facilitate many different diverse ground stations 
uh, yeah, that picture misses a big telescope that participates in the network. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, there are lots of uh, ground stations all over the globe um, covering uh, hundreds of satellites. So the idea is that uh, we share our data, we share our infrastructure, and to do so, we use open source technology. For example, um, the major, the first project that started uh, on uh, Satmux was a uh, Satmux database. It's a database describing uh, in a structured way um, a satellite. So, and it's transmitters and uh, the data that come from that uh, satellite. Uh, so it's machine readable. So other projects, other organizations, uh, other software can uh, use data from that to enrich uh, the information. It's part of the example, which is fun because it's really easy to prototype. And, uh, of course, data is provided by the Southern Network, obviously, uh, but also from uh, people running their own software, sometimes, sadly, not always open source. But uh, the idea of sharing open data is a uh, really paragon to what we do. And uh, that idea, we hope that uh, comes to the people that use uh, our software. Uh, so, the network itself uh, is, uh, of course, crowdsourced. You can participate in the network uh, using a um, Raspberry Pi and a simple antenna, like there is one uh, depicted uh, in uh, the UK. Um, it's also powered by Django, actually, because we are comfortable with that and allows us to prototype really fast, which is really nice. Uh, so, the operators work together on uh, setting up ground stations and uh, sharing information, even scheduling um, data from uh, other passes, and it's a really interesting way to see that um, the collaborative part of uh, working together is really important in what we do. And, uh, I believe that key uh, to that is uh, the modularity allowed by open source uh, or empowered by open source, uh, whatever you like. So, uh, in order for people to actually set up a ground station, they need to use um, uh, their own computer. Mostly, most people are. Uh, would use a uh, Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 uh, and the uh, cheap, relatively cheap uh, software defined radio bundle. Um, the software itself, uh, it's a Debian based image actually. Um, several scripts based in Python. And uh, it uses, uh, it controls uh, software defined radios using uh, the radio, using uh, GSOP and GSAT, a sub mix with um, out of stream uh, new radio modules. Uh, uh, by using a uh, SOP SDR, uh, that allows us to use uh, several. Uh, SDR hardware, be able to uh, be versatile on what people can actually choose to use. Um, of course, since uh, we focus a lot on hardware, we also provide the rotator, a thing that moves uh, your antennas on azimuth and elevation. 
uh, of course it's open source hardware uh, you can do it yourself the, the um, detailed uh, instructions on how you can do that on our wiki uh, several parts are 3d printed and uh, if you don't have access to a 3d printer uh, now that things are starting to open up uh, I suggest it's a good uh, opportunity to visit your local uh, maker space or your local hacker space and work with these people to 3D print uh, any uh, stuff you <laughs> need about that. And um, it's actually con uh, the rotator has, of course, electronics to control movement and stuff like that based on an Arduino and uh, it's connected to a Satmox client. Uh, uh, and of course, as all our uh, projects, it's, it's designed using uh, FreeCAD and KiCAD, which I believe it's interesting. Uh, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest, a few years ago. So the data we collect uh, visualized using a uh, Grafana and they are decoded first uh, using a Kata IO, which is a really interesting project. Uh, if you have to use, uh, have to decode arbitrary uh, binary data, and uh, that passes uh, for Kata and then uh, goes to uh, Grafana to visualize the data you have. Uh, there's always uh, links on uh, my presentations on uh, the several websites I'm uh, referring to, of course. The thing is that we can provide you a near uh, to live okay, um, dashboard on uh, what the satellite uh, transmits. So you can actually see uh, the batteries of a satellite or the gyroscope's condition or anything that can be uh, decoded from the data. Uh, this data and uh, this information is actually crowdsourced mostly by teams that are working with us uh, or people that are willing to check the documentations, the documentation provided by teams publicly in a little bit of them. That's uh, really interesting to see that sometimes uh, a team has just published some stuff uh, and uh, volunteers check them rigorously and uh, try to figure out uh, what the data means. It's interesting the way I see it, at least. Uh, so, also, uh, by being able to have such a amount of data. Uh, we uh, there's a project called Polaris, um, which actually, interestingly, uh, gets data from the network, from the Southmost network, and uh, allows uh, to get insights using machine learning. Uh, it's an interesting project. Uh, it does provide, at least at the moment, um, some insight. It's not that fully autonomous, uh, but uh, it's uh, really interesting to see that using uh, a lot of open source data and uh, machine learning, you can have uh, interesting um, insights on uh, how a satellite behaves and what are the interconnections uh, with uh, the different complex subsystems of a satellite. Um, so, in order for to make um, sense of all that data and uh, all the information that's provided uh, on uh, Satmux and in general. Um, 
We work with the uh, Center for Astrophysics, Harvard and Smithsonian, uh, in the United States of America, to create uh, Metasat, which is a, a schema for, uh, that describes um, satellite uh, missions, especially focused on small satellite missions. That could allow us to make more sense and have a, a structured way of understanding uh, what's described and um, provide uh, a concise database of data uh, of satellites and making sense of it all, which is really important for us. Uh, since we try to collect data from several satellites, hundreds of satellites actually, but not all these satellites are working with us to give, uh, are um, always uh, satellites built by LSF. We only have built two, and we've, uh, three, and we've flown only one. But the thing is that uh, understanding data and uh, having a good understanding of uh, what is what is crucial on uh, making sense and making uh, all this data really more easily processed by the scientific community. Uh, but this data should also be processed uh, easily by lots of people. So again, together with uh, the Center for Astrophysics, we started um, an educational project called the uh, Library Space Technology Network. Uh, it's a pilot project for educational resources. Uh, we put uh, uh, some ground stations on several uh, um, public libraries uh, in the United States of America and uh, in Chile and um, Moldova uh, on the pilot. Uh, we, we are expanding to more in the future, um, but the focus on that is to allow for people to understand uh, the technologies that are used and to allow them to see that they can use uh, these technologies uh, in order to research uh, and uh, figure out uh, um, and more uh, opportunities to get sense of this data. Uh, so, uh, of course, what we are working on is not only uh, data and not only uh, networks. We are actually uh, built the uh, Egopisat. Uh, it's a uh, 20 by 10 by 10, that's to you. Uh, CubeSat, uh, it was deorbited um, in November 2018. It was our first uh, satellite, also the first satellite uh, built in Greece, and most importantly, the first open source hardware uh, satellite, an open source software satellite, uh, meaning that. Uh, the design, uh, the schematics, firmware, all these things are uh, publicly available on our repos. Um, um, that's uh, an interesting uh, start, to be honest. Uh, of course, we would do a lot of stuff differently and now that we are more experienced and uh, have uh, a vast network nowadays, especially for uh, um, satellites. And uh, we believe that uh, especially working with the uh, Libricube community, um, allows us to uh, have an interaction with uh, also experienced people uh, on uh, that matter. And uh, 
we also uh, move to smaller satellites it is a challenge and we started working on a small uh, pocket cube uh, format uh, that's a five by five centimeter okay a pocket cube unit is five by five by five uh, centimeters uh, which is not that big uh, it's uh, an interesting uh, project I mean that uh, it allows uh, for even smaller satellites but of course with uh, compared to uh, CubeSat uh, limited uh, uh, capabilities in terms of uh, volume uh, but the recent uh, developments in miniaturization has allowed us to uh, uh, have a capable enough packets let's say of course uh picking nineties led to the development of uh, our most recent uh, satellite pro uh, open hardware satellite project uh cubic one and two it's a twin satellite uh well you can call it constellation it's just two satellites but yeah the interesting thing about these satellites is that they have a, a radio frequency plate load that allows us to actually do several experiments on uh, launch and early operation space uh, identification on SATNOX uh, to enhance orbital tracking and um, being able to use the um, transmission of the satellite to create the uh, Keplerian coordinates in order to track our own satellite independently. It is a really interesting project. Uh, I'm looking forward to see it launching, obviously. And uh, we are actually waiting for um, to be launched on the inaugural la launch of Firefly Alpha and uh, yeah, I'm uh, holding my breath for that because it can happen the next month or so so yeah um, uh, yeah well actually uh, on that mission we also build the pocket cube deployer uh, which has allowed us to uh, host other four satellites there are six satellites in that small thingy but my friend Manuel is holds uh, also designed using a uh, keycard and freecard and the focus is uh, to lower the deployment costs uh, for people that want to test their hardware uh, in our group. Uh, it's also scheduled uh, to be on uh, the Firefly Alpha launch uh, mission and uh, well, we thought we were looking forward to see uh, how that will perform and of course uh, and how we will be able to uh, get these to the hands of more people or allow people to uh, figure out the opportunities to launch with us in future missions maybe based on that deployer um, also I've created uh, uh, some comms uh, well, it's a uh, um, communications board um, take some of the heritage of uh, heritage of uh, UPSAT 
lots of active uh, R and D, uh, and the focus is that uh, having a, a long. Um, Yeah, uh, having a um, subcom certified subsystem could uh, allow for people to be able to easily uh, set up their own uh, communications uh, stack. Um, the hopefully, uh, that will allow for more people to be able to. Uh, use the network um, to be inspired by our work. Um, also, in the rest in game, uh, we are working together with uh, students uh, from uh, local universities in Athens, and uh, they are involved in a student uh, sounding rocket system. Um, and uh, yeah, we encourage them to open source their designs, uh, their work using our FreeCAD and KiCAD. And it's an interesting project. Uh, I understand that people are uh, a bit uh, cautious about rockets, uh, but uh, that's a um, a rocket mostly designed to allow for experimentation for students. It's a uh, it's has an abogee of um, three kilometers. Has a hybrid fuel, which is not exactly either gas or a solid. It's an interesting concept, and it's really interesting, in my humble opinion that uh, students, uh, students and their university are uh, happy to have that uh, open source. Um, uh, I have to also uh, uh, talk about uh, the greater open source community, uh, especially active uh, through the open source keeps it a workshop. Uh, it's uh, an open source conference uh, for all open, uh, open source projects related to space. I would be more than happy to see people like uh, Alex, that uh, speaking later, to present there. Uh, I won't talk about uh, Artur because Arthur is also part of that. He's been really active uh, on uh, OSW and really have even set up our own uh, big blue button uh, instance. So, yeah, I have to admit that uh, it's always an interesting thing to see open source. Uh, projects presenting uh, their engineering, to be honest. It's more than uh, uh, Libre Space Foundation, of course. Uh, it's a greater community uh, that we love to work with, to be honest. Uh, if, uh, if you're interested in what drives actually people on uh, uh, participate in open source, especially uh, in uh, space and uh, satellite communications, I would suggest you check out uh, uh, opensatcom.org. Uh, it's an activity uh, we undertake with the European Space Agency and has some interesting uh, information over there and an interest, really interesting uh, industry report on uh, how um, open ecosystems promote standardization and how relevant they are to the uh, satellite communications uh, industry um, 
has some outtakes on that and there's a detailed report that you can read and I'm totally suggesting you should check it out. Um, if you would like to participate, our GitLab uh, is open, of course. Our community forums, apart by discourse, are uh, provided in this slide. Um, there is also a matrix uh, channel for people that are uh, interested in chatting about uh, open source technologies in space. Um, and yeah, we also have a, a manifesto. I'll, if I have time, uh, I would love to reply to some of your questions. Um, first and foremost, uh, Red asked if you, are, you have examples of uh, usage of metadata definitions on uh, model based system uh, engineering. Uh, product uh, projects. Uh, I'm not familiar that there are actual implementations right now, uh, but I also would like to check out uh, check in with our friends at uh, Metasat uh, to get more information uh, about people that are interested in implementing such stuff. Um, Artu asks if uh, LSF receives any funding from uh, or support from the Greek government. Yeah. Well. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, that's a nice question. Well, the Greek government recognize, uh, recognizes us as uh, a legal organization and uh, allows us to interact with the European Space Agency. Um, and to that extent, uh, we are very lucky to be able to be, well, although a non-traditional organization, not a big company, we are not a university, we are just a non-profit non and we are people that started working on space from hackerspace, from a basement, downtown Athens. Yeah, I have to uh, say that their support is allowing us to interact with the European Space Agency and uh, currently, we don't have any funding support or anything else. In my humble opinion, um, to be honest about it, what we do is for the public and for the open source technologies we work on. For all. Not only for the Greek uh, space community and industry. Uh, I hope uh, that uh, we will continue on uh, looking to for cooperation, for cooperation uh, with anyone that's willing to uh, do free and open source stuff in peaceful way in space. Uh, yeah. Uh, Alex asked a really interesting question whether Satmux uh, has a larger strategy to collect position information for all flown uh, cubesets and uh, provide that information uh, publicly uh, uh, via uh, provided information that's uh, publicly accessible uh, uh, if we okay let me rephrase that. Uh, whether or not uh, we uh, have a larger strategy to collect uh, position information for all, all flown cubesets and make that information publicly accessible, or if it's that already done via Celestra. Well, we do work with people 
uh, to provide the uh, identification information. Um, then we have Keplerian uh, 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 coordinates to share. We share it with the whole world. Sometimes even just by our Twitter. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a really difficult task to get data for all cubesets because or, and all satellites even more difficult because uh, we don't have data for all cubesets. We don't know exactly where all cubesets transmit, and uh, that's. Um, so that's a different uh, task of its own, uh, but we are interested in uh, making more uh, positional data available for all. And uh, we are working on that and we are checking what our options are to do that and how we could do it uh, properly and to provide usable information because that's a really uh, important task. Uh, as uh, Manoli said, we do have that uh, granted a new ESA project that includes an active identification tracking system for um, satellites. It's really interesting, it's just the start, we will, be, we will see how I will be able to uh, implement that. Uh, I'm open to any other questions uh, you may have, but I don't want to also take more time from my co-speakers. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Eletheris. That was a really interesting presentation. I was very impressed by the scope of the project. Yeah, you seem to have many different aspects of uh, CubeSats and everything nailed down. Okay, so thank you very much, Eletheris. Uh, I'd like to introduce our next speaker.